How's that? Okay, maybe it's a little loud. Getting her set up. Am I blocking the view here? Look at this most interesting garbage. <laughs> Hey, there's Sam now, I hope. Thanks for telling me. I figured it out because I couldn't see it. Um, my car battery died. There, I'll tell a little story. My car battery died last night and uh, I had plugged and set everything up because my neighbor Chris Picor was gonna lend me one of those little adapters. So uh, I ran down and got the car started and then I had to drive around. But it turns out that I forgot to hit one button on the audio recorder, and that's why there was no sound in the beginning. These small little technical things. So three minutes and we'll get going. I've got uh, the nice sounds of nature in the background. I'm gonna do two drawings again this week. Hopefully uh, the second one doesn't suck. It's gonna be really hard and uh, I'm on day 10 of the master cleanse, so I haven't had solid food in 10 days and I've just been drinking lemon water and maple syrup. I feel great, uh, but I'm not, I'm a day guy. Like I get up at 6 a.m. So I'm feeling tired after 12 hours. We'll see if this drawing helps me uh, get through the night. I'll just keep drinking this drink. <laughs> Old man ears. Well, one minute away! Exciting! That reminds me, I need a timer! Timer. And now that we're operational and I can see that you guys are writing responses, why didn't it put mine up? There we go. Okay. I gotta shrink some windows here and then I'm gonna flop up the camera. I kept it loose today so it won't be as wiggly and wobbly when I change the setup. There's a lot going on on this screen, I tell you. Okay, so all I gotta do is tilt up. Excellent. Howdy, folks. Uh, tonight, we're gonna re-attempt uh, actually not re-attempt. I'm drawing different drawings. Michelangelo. Uh, you can see the two I've chosen in my background. For the first session, I'm going to start out with a layout pencil, which is often uh, a softer, darker graphite. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw the blocks uh, around the major shapes. And then I'll roll over my uh, kneadable eraser and just lighten it a little bit. But I'm gonna do it dark, so you can see kind of how I construct the major shapes of the body. Then I'll go over top with the sepia conte. 
This sepia conte, uh, it's not quite as red as the red chalk he used, but the ones that I used last week, which were that red, uh, it was too hard to get a fine line, and we're really going to need a point. So I've sharpened it properly. If you don't know how to sharpen a pencil, that's crazy to me. Uh, go to the Atelier Artista YouTube video that teaches you how to do it. Uh, because I want them to look like this at least. Um, both of them are sharpened like that. Take the shoulder off, use a blade. Uh, and I also have white because I might highlight some areas. So the first uh, maybe two hours, hour and a half with our upon tomorrow breaks every 25 minutes. I'm going to work on this one. Now this figure is a lot more stiff. But the reason why is because there's a lot of interesting rendering things I can do in this one. To show, you know, the serratus and the nuances of the muscles more cross at you. Whereas this one here is a lot looser and unfinished and will be a lot harder to make it look good. And I'm going to have to uh, change the justification of uh, my paper to horizontal for that. So my goal is uh, you enjoy the background bird sounds. Uh, I've been reading a lot of books, so I'm going to rant about what I've read because one of the best ways to really glue into your neural pathways what you've read is to verbalize it or teach it to someone else. If you don't want to hear it, turn on your own bird sounds. Uh, maybe check in every now and again and draw along. You can just go online, type in Michelangelo drawings, and you should be able to find these or something similar. So that being said, uh, let's get ahead and let's get drawing. I'm going to turn the birds down a little bit. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can't screenshot. This probably won't be good enough quality. And right over there is our man Obama. I've been listening to his book while I draw. It's pretty amazing, but obviously not going to do that when we're drawing today because I'll get a copyright strike and then we won't have a YouTube video archived. So let me just tilt back down. Whoa. I hope this is okay. I'm keeping this uh, camera real loose. So it might drift while I'm drawing. But it's easy enough to adjust. So putting the timer on for 25 minutes. I'm trying to do this better for you guys. I hope that, you know, leave me comments, suggestions, likes, shares, whatever to grow this channel because I'm not going to be doing this once we can uh, open up again. I'll have a live model in here. All right, I'm taking off this jacket though. It's, it's warm in here. And the hat, so you guys don't have to watch a hat haul video. I've had this since last year. This one piece of newsprint has really held up. All right. So the Bougaro we remember, Bougaro. It's nice to look at what you did to remind yourself that you don't suck. I'm gonna tell you, I, I think I'm gonna be pretty rusty. I have not, I've only been drawing for the live stream. I haven't been doing my uh, regular drawing. In fact, oh, there was one more I thought. Oh, here we go. This guy with the bad legs, last week. Right? Review where you're at. You're only as good as your last piece of work. I've been painting a lot more, but I'm not ready to show you guys that. I will be making a video on my personal channel uh, for that piece. All right, 25 minutes, start on the clock, and I will read your comments as I go. Hey, thanks, Navin. That's cool. Thanks for coming, guys. You can turn the volume down if you don't want to hear the rant. Just keep the channel on so it logs the time and makes me look like everyone wants to sit and draw. Because I know th three hours is a long time. But we're going to talk about some cool shit tonight. Oh, God. Will that swear give me trouble? I don't know. Okay. 
I'll try to pay attention to this screen. I tend to not do that much when I get drawing. So uh, lay out pencil or uh, you guys can use an HB, but I need something uh, stronger. This is a general's layout, extra black number 555. And so uh, I'm gonna start again with my uh, quadrant ideas. Now I've just gotta quickly move the picture and the YouTube screen because I like my stuff to be perfectly centered when I'm drawing uh, because I use this quadrant technique. So I want to be able to look up straight ahead of me. It's not sight size, but as you've seen in all the past videos, I'm fairly accurate uh, in terms, I'm drawing about the size that I'm seeing it. I'm not actually measuring it on purpose, but I like to start with uh, crosshair. Um, like a hunter would hunt something down. Uh, in if you're not a drawer, the right side of the brain is a really good way to learn to draw and they give you like a piece of plastic and you put it in front of you. Because really what you're doing is freezing a three dimensional world in this distance, like a piece of glass in front of you. And um, it's like the 3D gets stuck on the glass, right? You're, you're transforming it. And the only reason that that's happening, why there's no Z space, we have X and Y up and down, side and side, because paper is flat. So maybe I'll just, break down these quadrants a little bit too this time. Uh, I guess my approach is a little bit classical drawing uh, in this case because we are studying a classical artist. But there's no head in this drawing and I always say go head, chest, hips. So in this case we're gonna go uh, torso like chest and what I see is the, the body is on the right side of the center line whereas the legs are lower than the halfway and they come across. So the legs will be somewhere here, the body will be here, and the arms somewhere up here. So I'm just gonna start with like uh, the shoulder girdle, and it kind of comes down at this angle. So these are gonna be very boxy forms to explain where the, the lines will go. So hopefully I'm drawing dark enough for you. My intention is to erase these lines. But it, this is sort of to reveal uh, my thought process in creating this. So if I wanted to, I could uh, put in where a head would be. Maybe right about here. The face would droop down. Right, you kind of get the idea. Maybe the neck could be there. That's the cranial mass. I might have drawn the head a little bit too big in, in terms of this body. Uh, but there isn't really a head in the example, so... Head, chest, and you can also for the chest use a cylindrical shape. So that would go up uh, to the acromion process across where your clavicle is. And the chest is about four cranial masses, so one, two, three, four. If you want a relationship, but it doesn't matter at this point because we're going to be uh, more like sculpting this body. Okay, so the hips, which are uh, kind of sitting at this angle here, so this is soft tissue, this is where the stomach's gonna be. You know, if I go down the center line of the body here, say that that's the center, that's where the belly button's gonna be. And the oblique, which will sit over. But basically, I, I can see the side of his leg. And so I will draw this box, the bottom of the butt. And I can take the angle, like I can hold this up and look at the angle and, and just copy it out. When you're first working, think like, you know, all the hours on a clock going around. That's really helpful if, if you, we often misjudge the angles in the opposite direction visually. Okay, I'm just gonna check my comments quickly just because I feel like some of the things I'm saying. All right, hey, Keith's here too, hocus pocus. I love all the comments, guys. It gets me amped. 
There's nobody here, but I feel like you're here. Okay, so the side of the hip we would have here would be uh, that dimple that you see in the butt, which is where the great trochanter is. So really, it's a box shape uh, tapering away, tapering away. Okay, so I've got hips, chest, head-ish, ish. Head-ish, right? Michelangelo kind of drew like a cartoony version here. But this is just to plot it in. All right, so once we have that, we need to think, okay, what are the angles? Now, we've already established it down at the hip, and we kind of have it up at the shoulders. You can hold your pencil out in front of you at an angle, and you can do it yourself. So I'm going from the acromion process to the armpit. And you can go straight across the two tops of the shoulders, which, which is what I have here. Okay. So then we need to put the limbs on. And I like to do the legs first because the legs hold up the body. And another reason that I like to do the legs first, um, other than the fact that they're bigger and always drawing bigger things first, big chest, smaller hips, and everything kind of tapers down. My arm tapers. It's wider at the forearm. It gets skinnier at the wrist. And same as the fingers, same as the legs. So I'll be drawing them uh, more like cylinders, uh, kind of, I kind of explain it as like a drumstick. So we'll get the uh, first leg on there. And the other, uh, the other reason why I say do the legs, if you think uh, Venus de Milo, uh, that's a beautiful sculpture and she has no arms and she's fine. The arms kind of follow what the legs do. If you jump up and down or if you, uh, you guys can't see, but on my chair I'm doing all these crazy actions. Um, so even though we we kind of go head down, I leave the arms often in a composition so the, ground, the legs are grounding it and holding it in its place and it's defining where the weight is and so the arms can kind of fling about and and change from there and even uh great masters often they would move the arms in their paintings uh after they kind of established the baseline so i'm holding my pencil i'm looking at the leg um it's going from here down so I just wanted to establish that box and I'm just guessing the, the size right now and the placement, but the angles are given to me up, up above. So once I get the general shape, that's I'll roll over this, I'll lighten it, and that's when I'll actually do the drawing. I want to have, because I'm doing a copy, a little plan. I'm willing to bet, I mean, Michelangelo is a master. Uh, he didn't do this process. He probably drew a couple circles and then just went to town. But uh, I'm not that confident. So, we're gonna have a plan first. Especially because when you're doing a copy, people love to uh, judge things side by side, right? Uh, I'm also taking a, a triangulation. I think this butt needs to be lower by a ways. There we go. Then, because the legs aren't looking quite thick enough. Okay. And also, the where the butt sits, if I draw straight across, the calf is, is still quite wide there. It hasn't actually um, turned in. So use straight lines if you can at first to be more accurate. All right, and some of the foot will come out here, whatever. I can carve that in later. That's a good placement. There's a leg behind. So I can look at the negative space here, uh, which is the space 
Ah, uh, it goes from the corner of the hip through, right? That's a nice angle. So look at this triangle. It's an abstract shape. I'll just color it in for a description purposes here. I Rather than trying to draw the legs, I'm actually drawing the negative space. And that's kind of what I'm doing with some of the carving out areas, just to get myself in there. Down here at the bottom of the leg, before the foot somewhere, after the calf, actually in alignment with the butt, horizontally, uh, the other leg's coming down at this angle. I'll probably have to grow some of my limbs here, is my guess. That uh, maybe I haven't drawn them wide enough. That was the problem last week I had as well. So I wouldn't be surprised if that happens again. The bottom for me always is a little bit of a distortion area. This was probably going to be thicker too. All right, back leg. I'm just going to measure each leg, okay? So that they're the same size. There's no reason um, that each leg should be different sizes. We're symmetrical, mostly. There we go. Just checking the halfway. I notice it lines up here. You are welcome. Uh, if you print out a photo or whatever, just fold it up a few times and actually fold lines on your resource material. There's nothing wrong with that. This is all training, right? We're just trying to improve our skills. All right, I got my legs kind of blobbed in there. Obliques. Lats. Okay, let's find out where these arms are. So I see uh, his shoulder, the deltoid coming about here. It's attached. And I don't quite know where the chest is yet. There's a little bit of uh, a tilt, just a slight tilt. The shoulders are tilt, the chest is a little less tilt. You know, maybe the nipple's right there. Maybe, I'm not measuring, so the other nipple, maybe right there. So I need a lot more mass on this side for sure. Lighten that line. And the arm is like coming up, gets awfully, it actually touches this corner. And then the wrist Drop the arm a little bit here. I think it was just getting a little too high up. Just the initial plan though. There we go. Wrist. We don't have the rest of the arm, so we don't need to worry about that. It's big, bulky shape. Michelangelo liked his men pretty robust. I'm just going to draw a diagonal for the back of the arm there. 
where it's touching this the side of the paper. Okay, last arm. Uh, deltoid. I'm going to draw this one more like a cylinder. Now, the arm is tilting at this angle. And so I can use something like uh, my cup, my pencil, and I can tilt it at the same angle I see the arm coming out, as if I'm trying to attach it. So then I can see the curvature of what's supposed to attach. You can use uh, your paper towel tube as well, and that will give you a good indication when drawing uh, cylindrical shapes and arms of where to put it. <laughs> oh. We're listening to birds right now because we can't have music and uh, it's calming. I actually fell asleep to this last night. My car battery died and I was uh, unable to uh, figure out a quick solution to charge it. So I slept at the studio. Okay, this time it's going up. And uh, sleeping at the studio is not comfortable. I use the model mats and then I uh, need something to help me sleep. It's a big space and it feels so different than a comfortable bed. Oh my God, club banger. Oh, Greg. Okay, so that's uh, a good generalization of my block in of the shapes okay we've got seven minutes left here so I'm gonna start the drawing I mean that's is the drawing but I'm, gonna, I'm looking this is what I want to draw with now but what I need to do so hopefully you guys can see that like that's the body essentially mine might even be a little bit more leaning a little bit more wide a little bit more dynamic it's not going to matter because I'm going to erase this off. Oh, so it's very light. I just want a structure here. So while I was doing the intro, I... Oh, there's my kneadable eraser on the floor. Now it's a, I think it's a bad habit. So I leave the kneadable eraser up on this metal because uh, it's cold. I used to leave it on Coca-Cola, but uh, I stopped drinking soda over a year ago only bubbly for me now but you want to keep it cold because it keeps it firm otherwise it's stringy and it's literally like gum the other thing is you only want to take small pieces at a time this one looks like one of the ones that fell or got rolled around or was used in charcoal it's pretty dark it started out red but it's impregnated with material already so um you want to just grab a small piece because it's better to use up a small piece and toss it and still have your full eraser there. So I'm just gonna make a little uh, roll up of it and just go over all the lines and kind of lift the excess material out because it's going to show up, like I'm not erasing it right off, just rolling it and lifting the excess out. And that will make the line a lot lighter. And then that way we can just pick the parts we wanna work on and um, we don't have to go in and, and fully erase. We've got our plan underneath, so we can be fairly confident, you know, that's gonna look good enough. Just good enough. That part I'll erase because I feel like the butt um, is a little further back. More like that. We have the tendency to, to uh, draw what we know or you know, if you think of R. Crumb, all the stuff he drew had those big legs, or Botero, big fluffy Michelin people. Uh, Michelangelo's has a certain style. They're really stocky. Actually, I would say they probably are just the body of a hardworking farmer, um, but done to the extreme. So, you know, they almost look like pretty big bodybuilders do today. Except this guy can cross his legs, it looks like. Okay, so we got five minutes left. Uh, maybe I'll start uh, with the uh, neck and the head. And the neck, 
Uh, the back of the neck is in alignment with my center line, which is where the uh, rib markings are going to emanate out from. So it's drawn loose, it's drawn cartoony. I'm holding quite far up, but I'll just bring that straight line down. So yes, mine isn't as red as the example. And it goes to the trap. This line is about the same length. So I just turn it, pull it down. So sometimes we want to have it be a nice smooth line. So I'm a little off, but it's not a bunch of sketchy little lines. Big, big line shapes. Okay, and let's start. We'll put the ear in. This material isn't as erasable, so I can't make as many mistakes, which is why uh, I did kind of the layout first. I learned that last week. So if I travel down at an angle, I get where the eye is. Just hope this works out. <laughs> it's just practice. It's nice to sit here with the birds singing. So I'm studying uh, ornithology, which is the biological study of birds. Birds, by the way, are reptiles. Um, Archaeopteryx is their uh, lineage from the theropods, which is a winged, the winged dinosaur we all remember seeing is all in a, actually that would be a really cool one to draw, crazy position. Um, but this is the study of the biology of birds and it's university level course, it's not easy at all. But while I've been studying, kind of put my mind in the situation that when I'm studying ornithology, I listen to bird calls as well. You know? It's like uh, a Pavlovian response. <laughs> if the birds are on, I'm studying birds. And so when I take the, uh, there's many exams, but when I take the exams, I'm going to listen to the sounds so that my mind is in that frame of mind. These are just some of the little tricks I've learned over the years. You don't want to be, you want to be in a similar place to where you're taking the test or where you're doing your memory work as you're going to perform the memory work for a test because it's still new knowledge. It still hasn't fully integrated. And so uh, the bird songs create that environment for me. Okay, a minute and a half left. We'll get the nose on there. Oh, um, this is that Victor, Vic, Victor Castillo. Like the, these cartoony little faces that Michelangelo kind of roughs in. Maybe he was like, I don't know, maybe he was a pedo or something because they look incredibly young, but they have man's bodies. <laughs> so, um, it's a little bit weird. Oops. Okay, so I got a, uh, the general head in there at least. Just thinking for the 30 seconds, because I'm not going to go back to this area. This is not uh, rendered, and also I'm challenging myself to do two once again. So, unless this one takes over, I've got to move fairly quick. Um, so there's a little bit of hatching to represent his jawline by the looks of it. Okay, so we gotta take a break. Because we're training, like interval training. And the intervals are 25 minutes, uh, which is the Pontemoro timing we use at the studio for how long the model's on the stand before a break. I used to do 20 minutes 
uh, but I read a bunch of scientific papers. I think they were Swiss. Uh, figure, figured out that this timing uh, works really well for the human focus level. At the uh, beginning, the incidents, things are new and exciting, so we have a lot of recall and we keep it in our mind. And then it kind of tapers out and then it starts to slide off as we're getting bored near the 25 minute mark. And so uh, we want to take our break then and then have a chance to see this uh, refreshed, refresh our eyes. And also the model needs a little break usually. This model, not so much. It's been dead for 400 years and is sitting in a museum somewhere. I'm not sure what this one is. Actually, I think I saw this one in Holland. And the other one was in, in England. And they're only like this big, some of them. Okay, so we take a break. Take our break. I'm trying to take a break. Bunny, take a break. Three minutes. Enjoy the bird sounds. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Nice start. You can actually see that? Let's hope we can do it in time. I'll drink some of my cleanse juice. Day 10. This is all I've had. I've had no solid food. So I'm just about halfway, I think. I might do 21 days. Oh, with this $500 mic, I bet you can hear every mouth sound and slurp. It's going to turn into a weird ASMR video. The only other problem with drinking this much liquid all the time, um, like I probably drink like 20 of these a day, is you have to pee a lot. And that's what I'm going to go do. <sighs> I need my mask and I'm taking the timer only because I don't want to beeping for like 10 minutes in your ears and on this video if I'm slightly late. I don't know how much liquid is in me. All right, now we just relax. We breathe, we look at what we've done. I think my head's a little big. Should be more squashed this way, but whatever. It's not the important part. Plus that nose is a little uh, short. So back to the ornithology thing a little bit. I'm learning just about all the biological classifications and all their DNA and um, you know it's it's all just science stuff and then their origins and how they know they came from dinosaurs but in one of the side notes because uh, it, it has little pictures it's a textbook and it will uh, talk about species and how they relate to each other but uh, the binomial name, so Carl Linnaeus, he made those binomial names, those the Greek names. Um, 
My favorite bird uh, or bird song is a wren. There are some in here actually. And I found out that the binomial name for wren is troglodyte, troglodyte. Which is funny to me because if you play D&D or are a nerd who likes, yeah, I mean, it's probably even in Harry Potter. Troglodytes, it's not a good name. Uh, they're like blizzard troll people. Um, but by definition, troglodyte actually means like ignorant. So I don't know how they got the bad rap. They have the most beautiful song. And I had uh, on one of my bird watching trips this summer, they're like this big. I had found one and just sat and listened to it for, I don't know, like half an hour. But you couldn't see this bird. I could because I had binoculars, but he was just like so small in the craziness of the trees. And um yeah, whatever. That's nerd talk. Nerd talk. Let's get back to the other kind of nerd talk that I do. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I guess, do this arm. Wait. Yeah, that's the way we want to work. Oh, let's do... Yeah. Just trying to see if there's a logic to this. Um, if I go horizontally across the plane of the nose is actually where the... Uh, the drop of the trap is so I'm gonna bring it down a little and you see I can't really erase that so I'm screwed but I'm looking for like like a printer horizontal or, or vertical alignments as I go I didn't drop this part of the neck low enough is what happened moving fast I drew it without any references and now I can't erase it because this material is not forgiving like graphite but it is beautiful and it feels gritty uh, similar to charcoal it's actually earth um, I don't know where this rock comes from France probably you know uh, Conte made outside of Paris but there are all these cave paintings in Lasso and they're you know 10 15 thousand years and that's how you know, you see him in the art history book, um, Crow Magnon Man. So um, the width of the deltoid is equal from the back of the head to the acromion process landmark. So I just want to be sure I'm getting to there. And I did in my original, but I want to check a little bit. I don't want to have crazy things I can't erase. It's probably a little rounder than this too. But hey, we're going to do it. Um, I took a speed reading course. So people do, some people do resolutions. I don't like resolutions because uh, they tend to be negative. So I don't want to smoke anymore. It's not like a, it's not in the positive form of, of, the, of what's being said semantically. So I like to do the opposite thing and find a different skill or something that I want to acquire. So I took the speedy reading course, uh, Jim Quick, quicklearning.com or whatever. And I've read three books already. It's also helping with my studies. So one of the books I read was, oh, it's at the front of the ear, was Alex uh, Gray's uh, the mission of art it's kind of like a spiritual treatise, a manifesto if you were, will about why artists do what they do and I happen to fall into I would think um, that category somewhat for my content uh, from painting the Tibetan works and stuff I mean his book talks a lot about entheogens um, you know seeing visions mystical visions because you're high Maybe in a, my past life. Uh, but I made notes about what, I was, uh, what I'm gonna talk about today a little bit. And now it's not the whole book, what I made notes on. The other books I read were like about marketing and you know, kind of boring, how to get more customers and the first book I read was actually a novel, which is very rare for me. 
Uh, a friend of mine sent me a novel as a gift, and uh, I, I'll admit I re-gifted it after I read it. I'm doing kind of like this like book club thing that I saw on Instagram. My friend Robbie Catania said on a post, post to this if you want to do a book exchange. So I did. And uh, I don't know, I'm supposedly going to get one sent from Boston. We'll see if it actually comes. All right, let's get the, the fat fleshiness of the bottom of the forearm here. I uh, don't know all the names. Digitorum longus, longus brevis, you know, I don't know all the names of the forearm muscles. Luckily, this particular piece doesn't uh, have a lot of that kind of stuff to deal with. So that goes to the top of the ear if I, you know, let, took a level. So I put it just where it needs to be. Just think all these things that you, you do, you know, you train your eye. And like meditation and stuff, when you train something, of course you're going to get better over it in small increments over time. Which is okay, right? It's good to do a little bit every day rather than cram. Not just for studying, but you just think if you wanted to play guitar and you woke up and it was beside your bed. This would create a great habit, by the way. And every day you rolled over and you scrimmed a little bit or you tried a chord. So you did that every day for seven days. Let's say to make the math easy, one hour. That's a long time, honestly, but um, so you practice every day for an hour. And your fingers wouldn't bleed, let's say, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, an hour, you had nice tough fingers. But you could also, on Sunday, play for seven hours straight. Well, for most certainly your fingers would bleed. And I don't think you would get as much out of it. So the reason we even do weekly drawings. I don't spend 20 hours drawing every single day, but if I do a little bit every day or every Wednesday, uh, come and do this, you're guaranteed to improve over time. It's a longer trajectory. Most people, they're impulsive. They can't handle planning for the long term, but still talking here about resolutions in many ways. How do we get to our goal? We need to know the signposts and, you know, read. I just read half an hour a day. I can read minimum 10 pages, at least a chapter a day. So if I was reading for an hour a day, I could finish a book every 10 days for sure. So you got to back. How, how much do you want to do? Back it off. How many drawings do you want to do a year? Divide by 365, you know, or, or per week. So if I take a diagonal from my uh, achromium process landmark here, and I can take the angles, like this is triangulation, we're very good at this, and I bring it to uh, where the armpit's going to be, it'll be right there. Oh, look, and I already have the back there. Okay, and I'm also going to take it where this front part of the armpit comes up. And I'm just going to look, and it's this angle. So I'm good. That means I have the right distance. Two points make a line. I'm happy when that works out. What about the angle of uh, the pectoral muscle? There we go. His arm is looking a little, um, what's that, sulpinol or whatever? Those guys in Russia that they inject themselves to have bigger muscles. It's too low. Too low is the problem.
That you can't inject your arms and become a better drawer. You have to do the work. That's also what I love about drawing. It's like you know who has that skill. You can't do this every day and not get better. <laughs> if you're if you have a plan, right? Like you could just draw a circle the rest of your life. I had a friend in high uh, art school who that's all he wanted to do. He was a weirdo. It's art school. So this part of meeting, if I dropped a plum down, if I drop a plum down and I'm doing it by closing my eye and looking at my material from the intersection point of the deltoid, actually, actually I'll finish the muscle here. And that was drawn, if you rewind this video, you'll see I already had that line drawn when I was drawing my cylinder. Uh, and I drop it straight down. I'll get the, where the oblique winds up. Uh, at the top of the hip. So I want to do that now. What? Just to figure out where I am down here. So I have to go even wider, shift it a little further. And that's in alignment here. So it's tilt slightly. And I'm doing that because I need to know from here where to go. So I've got a nice wide turn. This should come in tighter. Boy, this guy's muscular. So if you're drawing from life, you wouldn't want to draw the contour. That's not the way to go especially when something's in 3D. I would say draw from the structure outward. We have that the little bit of the chest line there. I'm kind of drawing, um, like Michelangelo did the work. I'm just going to draw some of the major shapes and then start uh, hitting the landmarks. We're hitting some of them on the way, but it's got this like nice shaded under the arm down the side and that's going to be crosshatch darker and i might not use his crosshatch technique it's all going to be based off time it will run out i'm hoping i can get two done here i'm starting to think that's not possible This nipple's going to be down here, actually. I'm going to take a measure, too, just to see. So my elbow to acromion process is about the distance of uh, the nipple. So I just check it. Look, turn it. Ah, there we go. And it's in alignment with that, too. So um, that's not how you would draw a nipple, but I need to know where it is in order to see where these forms are going. This part is quite light in here, so I don't want to put a lot of line work in, in there. So we've got some good structure here. I'll just finish off this arm while I'm up here. Without the hatching, of course, just the shape of the arm. Shape is one of our mainstays here. Shape is length and height you know and if you think about shape it's probably the most important thing it describes perspective it gives the illusion of something going back into space uh, it also has proportion a relation between uh, things it also has the other p which is placement where does that shape go and that is the number one thing in all art in drawing art i mean i'm not talking about ceramics or anything here because you got to put that vessel somewhere but we're talking about creating the illusion here okay that's where my arm is going to go let's move over down um this part of the arm 
we have a nice flexion this folding and it's very expressive in Michelangelo's he would have just drawn this with a piece of chalk nicely from whatever his source is there's a slight angle let's get the other nipple in here I think it's about there following that line that I have it's not that big though I don't know what I'm doing with these headlight nipples okay where does it go so it goes up and it attaches to that and below that where I have my structure line and I always build on the outside of the structure I add the masses on the outside and they're always going to be um, convex never concave on the human body so we go like this they fold they undulate they overlap I actually think I'll move his belly button over slightly like that okay then we go this way and you can see my angle line there it's a little far out but let's let's get it in here fold and that meets up to the leg uh, above the belly button there is a nice fold line and it it's not straight nothing should be straight it curves and it dips in just like it's going over the lower part of the six-pack which this guy kind of has ends before the nipples all right look at this funny little face I've got here I better take a photo of this before I forget this happened it is like a little face. It's cute. Like that looks like the bottom lip shadow and then the lip fold. Hee <laughs> hee. I think that uh, when Michelangelo and some other artists, they draw kneecaps, they look like grumpy old men. Okay. These birds are so nice. Let's get this bicep in. It'd be so sweet to be able to actually like mimic these songs. These are not the birds you, if you mimic, you're not hunting these birds. <laughs> you know, like hunters mimic and they try to like sexually attract their prey. It's actually kind of a cruel trick for us to eat. It's like a decoy is like porno, right? It's like, hey, come look at all these turkeys we got over here, turkeys. And then they do the calls, and really they're just trying to be like, come mate with us. Now if you eat beef and chicken from, you know, the producers of the, the meat, then you might, it might not make sense to eat hunted food. I personally feel hunters, not all, I don't think that they're all rednecks. Ah. Uh, they care a lot about nature and the conservation thereof. They're the ones who are paying the money to have the opportunity to predate something that's going to die of starvation because they're really trying to control the populations. 
And it's not even like controlling the populations. It's to be reasonable. It's not going to be, uh, we don't have wolves in Alberta anymore, which would have been the natural thing is they would find, you know, the deers that fell, starved and dying in the woods. I think the magpies could do a little bit of the work. All right, there's that other arm. Maybe. I'm not, uh, you gotta, in the rest of my life, I'm judgmental. In my own art, I'm really judgmental. But you gotta be honest with yourself and just judge whether you think it looks good or not. And then later, you guys will see in the critique, um, we'll find out the truth. But it takes a long time to develop your eye. And that's why we just wanna keep working at it. Your eye and your hand, and then by the time you're your tool to enjoy it, it doesn't work anymore. I'm not trying to be a nihilist here, but it's kind of true. You know? Beethoven. Wait, he's the one who went deaf. Yeah. Going deaf. But, I mean, also, maybe if, if I went blind, I could be a good enough drawer that I could do it by feel. I think if I go blind, then I will go back into sculpture, which is what I got my f first degree in. I'm actually sculpting uh, with epoxy resin a project right now. Uh, a wall for a water tin. It's a lot of fun. I'm up a ladder all day, I'm getting a lot of exercise. Up and down. Okay. Four minutes left. So I'm not gonna draw um, any of these shapes per se. I'm still gonna work the boxing in strategy and just keep working down because if time runs out, uh, I can render it later or I decide maybe this becomes a rendering thing. I don't know, it's art guys. I actually don't know most of the time when I'm making something. I'm doing a painting right now that I have lots of theory for um, but the way that I paint is a lot of the painting is created on the canvas. I, I have a general sketch and then I let each element come and fuse together. And by taking a lot of time, it allows it to gestate, you know, and uh, some things that are happening in this painting right now. Like I could have never planned or thought that out. And that's really exciting. Artists are like doing this search, I think, for some sort of solution, some sort of meaning, you know, we're, we're after something and we don't know what it is. And through process, we get a result and it's, you know, often not what you had planned, but still done by your hand. So it still has, you know, has your style or whatever. And if you don't like your style or you don't know what your style is, try copying something that isn't your style and you will quickly find out. <laughs> like this isn't my style, it's a challenge though. So it's worth doing. And when you learn and copy others, you actually, oh, well, that's really cool how he dealt with that. Uh, I'm gonna take that into my practice. I think the key word there is practice, right? We gotta keep practicing. That didn't wind up in the right place. Okay, so the leg, uh, top of the muscle bubbles down, and then it goes like that. Maybe I went too far. Nothing straight though. This might look straight right now, so maybe I'll just, even just tilting something a little bit gives it more life. There's a little bit of a line here where the um, lower oblique is gonna sit. And higher than this, I got the hip falling out. So I'm drawing a little sketchy because I'm not sure where I'm trying to get to. And I feel like it's gonna be a lot lower than what I had. 
which is good because I, the lower legs were getting elongated. Oh, let me move that up. Sorry, guys. I do keep checking the uh, chat. I would love to see some more words on there. <laughs> but there's probably, you guys are drawing, probably busy. Um, I might just take a measure from here to see how far down this leg goes and just see what is similar. Now, once again here, it's very similar. So, let's see if I can find something else that I've established that works. Oh my god, the distance between the nipples is how far the butt goes. So, a little lower than what I had. A little bit lower, which is great because I needed that. I needed that room to get the that little bit of turn right there. This is I'm very happy right now. It's the little things in life. Like being done the session. Meaning that amount of time. Okay, so we're still sculpting it out. It's not looking terrible. We'll see at the end. We'll we'll do a comparison. In fact, maybe I'll do a comparison um before we draw the second drawing i i'm not sure we'll play it by ear so uh i'm just going to take three minutes because i wasted a little bit of time already this arm is not tilted upright enough i know that now I always find these things out after right But for, you know, three or four sittings, it's going to have to be good enough. I feel like figure drawings in these situations, they're not meant to be a finished piece of art. They're study. If you're doing this full style drawing, maybe you'd take 20 hours to copy it. Exactly. And you'd try to get every little line in. The way that it goes. Just like the bar drawing. And if you haven't done a bar drawing and you can't knock it till you try it, it's hell on earth. But worth it. Totally worth it. Okay, two minutes. I'm going to go get some more cleanse juice. they're listening the cleanse juice um, is like a quarter more than this to, for like a liter is a quarter cup of freshly squeezed lemon juice and that provides the alkalinity uh, to uh, drop the acidity down in your system and your blood but also lemon is in cleaners and it sports cleansing effects and has uh, some uh, vitamins and amino acids that you need for the building blocks of your body and then there's an equal amount of maple syrup if you're losing weight you add more maple or if you want to lose weight you have less maple syrup because it's got the sugars in it and pumps up your insulin level and if you want to maintain your weight even though you haven't eaten solid food you have an equal amount of maple syrup uh, the maple syrup has to be the richest and darkest type you can and it provides you all your other minerals so you can safely do this cleanse for 40 days and I'm not a doctor don't take my advice but I have done this cleanse at least once a year if not two or three for over 20 years it's crazy I was doing it back in art school and uh, I did the math of how long I've been doing it I was surprised when I could say a decade about something you know you're getting older when but now I can say I've been doing these cleanses for over 20 years. So try, tested, and true. Make me feel great. 
Uh, and now that I'm in my 40s, I wouldn't mind losing a little weight, so maybe I'm putting a little less maple syrup in there. And then there's cayenne pepper in it. And this drink right now is really hot. It's spicy. And the cayenne is supposed to help uh, the purification of your blood, but it also helps keep your body warm because eventually, eventually after many, many days, you're gonna have no more fat to burn. You're gonna go into ketosis. Uh, and often uh, through your cycles throughout the day, cortisol in the morning, melatonin at night, but throughout the day, your body does have these temperature drops. And I find that the cayenne helps uh, uh, stabilize that for me, keeps me warm. Like right now I'm actually sweating. So I don't know from drawing odd the other thing is not preparing food not thinking about food not going out and buying food i swear i'm saving three hours a day because uh also when i'm on the cleanse my rhythms go back and i start waking up early again if if that habit has been changed through uh exterior pressures and then all of a sudden uh i'm only needing six or seven hours of sleep there's no alcohol in my system and whatnot. So I find it hugely beneficial and I like to get a lot of things done. Those who know me know that that's the truth. Maybe the reason I got the nickname bunny is because I'm more a busy bunny than anything else. And I have been, even though the studio's closed, I decided, well, if I can't be the teacher, then I'm going to be the student. Um, I'm, doing a Jungian psychology course on archetypes in hopes that that knowledge will help me build my paintings. Uh, you know, the hero's journey and all that's kind of built into there. So I've determined that as things changed a little bit, and then I had that triangle that I was showing you earlier, it's in the wrong place. That should be the top of the triangle. But I'm gonna just measure again and make absolutely sure. Just find something on the body that's um, equidistant. Just co That's called comparative measuring. There's all, well, there's really three types of measuring in art that I teach and use at least. There's probably more. I mean, you can actually measure something. There's sight size, where you're drawing something the size that you see it. And that is like the bar drawings and what lots of the ateliers teach. And I think it's awesome. The issue for me with that is it's not the only way. And also, you can only draw things the size you see them. So what if I want to draw this leg 10 times bigger, you know? Well, that's where the next one comes in. Comparative measure. It's harder to do and, and learn. It takes more time. But it's when you could, side size, you could have a ratio. You could say one of these is equal to two of these. And that's how like marble sculpture is, is made. Compare, you're doing sight size, but you're growing the measurements. Comparative measure is using, well, if this is this long, then this is this long. It's a little looser and it's more like fitting puzzle pieces together. But you can draw something that's like 500 feet away, big or small as you want. Because it's about the ratios and relationships between everything. That's my preferred method. Uh, I have learned both. Sight size is great, not as practical but way more realistic and accurate. And then triangulation, which is when you're like going from here to here and you figure out angles, not the crosshair like what I started with. So hopefully that little piece of information is useful to you. I'm hoping that by just, oh, loading you guys full of data, that you'll keep coming back because I would really like to grow this channel. So, because that moved, this moved too. So I was just looking for the meeting point of the two lines, the crossing point. It's outside of here, straight down, and 
traveling from this angle. So if I get that angle right, close enough, I go down and I kind of have a point there. So there we got the, the calf. I got a calf meeting tomorrow night. Calf, uh, I'm on the board of directors. I'm the vice president, and in March I'll become the president of the Calgary Allied Arts Foundation. Calf, not Caliph, um, is where I got my first break in this city. Um, they have a residency program, or I guess we, I guess I could say we. We have a residency program that pays artists to work in their studio, the studio that we offer. And so the studio is here at C-Space. It's actually across the way from me, which makes me a perfect person to monitor and see what's going on in the space. We have a board meeting tomorrow night to talk shop. Uh. All right. Looks like blobbly, blobbly, blub, blub, blub. Okay, so now I can take that angle and I can see where the leg is. It travels up the direction of the knee, and that the or sorry the top of the leg there goes from the belly button or the this hip at this angle so there we go there's that negative space again not a hundred percent accurate but once again good enough because good enough is enough for here I'm a Virgo and a lot of people say we're perfectionists we do seek perfection and beauty for sure. I mean, that's why I think uh, pretty good at the arts. I like harmony in my work. I especially love Japanese stuff like Hokusai and Kurashagi. When I was in Japan, I was really excited by the printmakers there. Um, their compositions, like if you want a lesson in composition, it's great to look at the old masters and stuff, but simple, um, Simpler is harder to do than like chaotic, really. And the Japanese printmakers could really pull that puppy off, I tell you. So actually the back of the leg, that's still a pretty good spot. I'm just going to triangulate and drop my line. Now, I had that two weird bulgy leg, but because the whole hip moved over, I can now actually get it right, because it actually begins here. Drops down. I'm dropping too far, but. There we go. What is it, measure twice, cut once? I think I do that, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. What else do we got to draw here? We need this olecranon. Sorry, the heel. Foot. I actually can't, you guys' window is in front of the foot for me, so I gotta go up there and shrink it a little bit. It kinda like goes whoosh. Some of these shapes are actually over uh, characterized that I'm drawing here. He knows where to put everything, every nuance. down that puts the ankle right about there actually I like how he draws his ankle he kind of drew the ear boxy like this too the tendon right there
All right, we're still looking okay. Oh, I should move forward a little bit. Is that right? There is a huge delay in this video, so um, I have to wait like 20 seconds to see. There we go. Okay, see what I'm doing. Let's get this last leg in. I mean, I got 15 minutes, so then I can uh, go back down and start building in some of the shadow shapes. Down the exact center, wherever that might be, is where the bottom of this leg winds up. Let me just measure that. Yeah, I'm taking a measure. It's exactly center. So that's kind of nice. Uh, when drawing the figure, you want to see uh, a center line and often comes from the neck pit. That's the center of gravity. I, I find that personally, I feel like my artwork and my drawings are a little stiff. Uh, I like Michelangelo uh, because he's got th that, that twisting going on for him. And uh, this, when I look at it now, I don't think it's super stiff. But when we look at the other piece we'll be copying, if we make it, if we don't make it today, we'll do it next week. Um, like, this is stiff for him. But for me, this is like not stiff at all. So I think I'm doing okay on this because I, I unfortunately do draw really stiff. I'm working that out. I'm going to just take a measure of this entire calf. Yep. Just find where for you, you find something that your eye is attracted to and figure out where that winds up because you know the calf ends on the same line. I had it a little far over there. So well, that's too far. That's it. I will go right in the middle. <laughs> Oh, I love that sound. Not just the birds. I think with the birds, we're on to something, though. I felt, I literally texted my mom I had a brilliant idea today. And that is we're going to play the birds. Okay, there we go. Wait a second, silly rabbit. I brought this brush. That's right. Just to get rid of all your little bits, it's a, a draftsman's brush. Uh, you can get them at Mona Lisa. I'm not sure if all art stores have drafting stuff. I don't go to a lot of them. As you guys know, I'm a diehard fan of Swinton's. I'm a loyalist. Treat me right. I'll stay with you forever, in terms of art stores, that is. Um, but sometimes you got to go check around the whole city to get what you need. Do not use Amazon if possible, because they're destroying the, the middle class, destroying the world. And when you order stuff from them, like Conte and stuff, a lot of times it comes, it's broken. Uh, I'm gonna snap a pic. Oh, a bunch of people are texting me, sorry. I'm gonna snap a pic uh, for social media. That's just the outline. Okay, great ghosts. Now, we're gonna go for uh, shadow shapes. in 11 minutes, no problem. The light's coming from here. So we'll follow the, the bed bug line um, down this side. And 
I'll draw where sometimes I'll be drawing the shadow shape, sometimes I'll be drawing what I perceive as um, the light. So that's actually a light shape because all of it's in shadow. So you got to change what you're looking at. So just like we got to sometimes use one of the three methods of measurements, sometimes we have to figure out where our edge is by looking at it a different way. I really thought I was going to talk about the book I was reading, but if I feel like we're just talking about the technique of drawing, which is nice because some people uh, have told me that that's why they watch this. That's why they come here is the guidance, the free inspiration and learning. It's kind of like peering into my mind. I actually, and I don't, I'm surprised I don't feel tired at all. I thought I was going to let you guys down today. Uh, last week I started losing my mind there at the end, but that was the start of the cleanse, so it's not actually that surprising. It's a little wide. I want to go more this way. And curve these lines because they will give you the appearance that the body is rounding away. Uh, it drops five, the chest kind of comes down. Yeah, maybe I'll do a translation of this drawing rather than do the cross hatching that he does. Let's bring my style into it a little bit more. These might be areas that I'm drawing out of light that I would also um, put the white in, maybe. So yeah, I'm gonna, I've decided I'm gonna kind of do it my way because I know it will look better for the material that I'm using and the time light limit that I've given myself. Because I'm only gonna go for one more session after this and then maybe, maybe, I just still don't know. Why do I pretend to have a plan? I just want it to be fun for me as well. And this is all, you know, the reason I'm doing these masker copies is not, uh, well, I don't have a model in here, obviously, but I'm going to be giving a presentation um, to the ACAD, I mean AU Arts, sorry, Old Habits Die Hard uh, students on February 2nd. And I want to have a bunch of examples and I want to have a fresh experience in mind. But also I can say, hey, guys, do you want to make this drawing? Look here. Give them some more resources because right now, I, I don't know what the school's offering them. Probably, while well, there's no studio space, that's for sure. I mean, even if my studio's closed, then the big studios can't be open. dark in here right now. A flat little bit of dark first. I'll work on top of it as well. like it. Hey, hey Jeffrey, you're here. Thanks for enjoying the silly musings. You guys just wait if I get into these notes. 
Oh yeah, there's even talk of nihilism in these notes. Great. We could go on a little journey together. A little journey of the thought process. I guess that's the thing that's like not... Um, maybe it's included in classes, I don't know. I don't teach a lot of theory. Um, like the why. Teach like the technical here. Which I think, you know, we're a bunch of adults here. We have our own interests, we have our own lives. It's not like, you know, places like ACAD when you got kids coming in at 18, 19 years old, they need to know who bottle air is. They need to be um, shown philosophy and, and theory. Although I, I disagree, disagree with a lot of the theories they teach there, but you got to find the things that you're interested in for yourself anyhow. But they're young adults, so they need a little guidance, right? You don't want to also create in a total vacuum. They definitely wouldn't um, use this as their textbook. But I would actually, uh, let me just whip this book out. I would actually include this book as uh, necessary for the type of artist that I am. The Mission of Art uh, by Alex Gray. And uh, I'm not saying go do drugs or anything like that, but he talks about spiritual art. And I like figures that tell a narrative story in a setting, okay? And, but I'm also really into esoteric stuff. And so the story that I want these figures to tell in a setting um, tends to be spiritual in nature. In fact, maybe, you know, I don't want to say all artists are somewhat spiritual because advertising arts, I don't think so, right? Advertising art, it goes after your base id kind of thing. Like it goes after sex or violence, you know, the news. These things, uh, they have some sort of art form to them, but I don't feel like they themselves uh, fall into the category of, you know, that the vision, the visionariness that uh, art has. Let's do it. Let's do it. In fact, that stuff I'm talking about is sensationalist. And in a lot of ways, I think it alienates people. You know, it's like tribalism, like who's in and who's out. And also, I don't want to be, I don't want to have to like art because it gives me a heart on, you know, like, well, that's as, that's as good as it is because it's getting my animistic needs met. Um, there's plenty of things for that. But I want my art to give people revelations. I want them to see beauty as I see. You know, this beauty of the world that's created before us and we're translating it or expressing it through what we do. I mean, even abstract art has is spiritual in nature, for sure. Okay. Before I go too off topic there. I'm also like, I know like Monk, he made the scream, right? Which is like not a pleasant vision. He actually uh, put himself into rehab for alcoholism. And that's regarded as his best work by art history. But after that, if you look at his work of like sunrises and sunsets, he was, he was after something. He was incredibly spiritual for sure. And uh, nobody liked the art that wasn't tragic or suffering. There's a place for putting that out there because people can relate to it. So it's like, you know, it has some sort of communication mission. But I want to do good things. I want to have the living spirit, compassion, and beauty in my work. So, you know, maybe I'll never be a famous artist because I'm not, you know, putting a big wiener in here and, and having you transfix and, and be attracted to it by your base needs. But honestly, I don't think art like that has, has merit or staying power. There's a place for it. Um, in the world, but not in what I think is good or important. 
I'm transfixed by beauty and and technical skill and like a human made that what and it gives me so much hope to know that that's possible and then i want to do it because i'm not limited by these rules you know the rules we learn to learn to break The artist's job is to tell the truth, to reveal the truth, maybe more truth than what's there. You know, photography does the facts, it documents, but is it the truth? Is it deeper than? All of these things are, you know, movies are even fake. So who's to say that this isn't more important and believable, you know? There's a lot of nihilism in art that is, I feel like, it moves towards confusion or fear or violence or the ugliness of humanity. It doesn't inspire. And what an nihilist believe? They, they, essentially, that life is meaningless, you know? Well, I don't want to... That would be a very boring art. That's just Vanta Black in a room. And you just walk in and you're like, oh, okay. I, I don't want to go to that show again. Maybe I should paint my room that. Wait, I'm losing... Okay, I'm losing my mind again. One, two, three... Three minute break. I'm t no. Sorry. Sorry, guys. This is the point in time because I was talking about something and I started to really get into it and I forgot what I was doing. So, uh, five minute break. This is a mental break for me and to drink some more because I was starting to get riled up. And that's not where we want to be. Hmm. Listen to those birds. Hmm. Maybe I'll do this for the whole one. I don't know. It's only 7.30. We're halfway. I like it with the shading. I don't mind. I don't mind it not being crosshatch of Michelangelo at all. It's clearly Michelangelo body. Two minutes.
bottom of my heart. My guy's head's too far over, too. <sighs> if I look at the measurement, it doesn't look so bad. Feliz Navidad. Oh my god, I need one more drink already. And we're gonna have to keep big on the next one. the video um, last week to listen to the sound and because I thought I was ranting like a madman um, this mic is great like you guys could probably hear me when I was way way over there in the kitchen so I know that we can hear that that sound always reminds me of Jeff Kleepus so relaxing 25 minutes, Punt de Moro timing. Jeff was nice enough to give me some lavalier mics so I could clip to my body, but this mic being like a foot away from me, you guys can see it in the picture. It's fantastic. It's a, it points like an XY pattern or some fancy stuff. Okay. Let's see how we do in the next 25 minutes in um, getting this closer to completion um, I would like to still try to do two that's my goal right but I might get caught up loving this thing which is fine we can do another one it is quite large too um, I'm still not convinced the whole way so as this, uh, the light's hitting the leg, there is tone here. This paper is toned, but um, there's a, like a slight half tone here on the top of the leg. This whole leg uh, uh, has material on it, but I'm not saying that it's exactly in shadow. I feel like the shadow is more here, but it is on the back side of light. So we're going to give it uh, that value first and build on top of that. So this would be like um, the darkest light or a half tone, some might call it. There's a bunch of names. And I'm turning as I go because I haven't sharpened my pencil since I started. So this is like 1000 grit sandpaper. I usually use 120. To sharpen my pencils or 150 it depends what you got so this is like the weakest version of that I can always erase a little bit out we do know some of it lifts some of it lifts out sure and the shadow line travels up the bottom. Remember I talked about the, the trochanter area, that little dimple, which is one of our landmarks. And it curls down. In the future, I could go over top and actually follow his, his cross hatching. It would still look, it would still have the same finish. Oh, Michelangelo. One day, one day. Michelangelo was talked a lot about in the book too. But let's get back to the book. 
there's my little notes on what I'm going to talk about. So, in this chapter, we'll just focus on that, this mystic eye chapter. Uh, it's about the artist having a calling. So some of us have like a mystical calling. Like I knew I was going to be an artist my whole life. So I make fun of that all the time because I'm like, oh, great. Like there's no discovery there within, within that. Uh, and I would say that it was a curse because I'm a fairly intelligent person. Maybe I could have been a multimillionaire if I was in business or something. Instead, I'm choosing to do something that um, society doesn't necessarily deem as as valuable as I believe it to be. So I remember at, at the age of seven, I wanted to be an artist. And I also wanted to be a, a psychologist. But my mom said I didn't have the nose for it. Um, anyhow, <laughs> you, you might not even have a calling now. You might know that you like art, like, and sometimes the calling is like, what are you going to make? What's the subject going to be? Uh, maybe you don't know. So I'm, I'm tangenting off the subject here, obviously. I'm not trying to give you a, give the book away. I want you to read it. I want to start a book club to read books about art here. Maybe you guys will eventually come around. And we'll do book club readings. Because if you talk out what you're reading and learning, you formulate your own thoughts. That being said, let's get back to it. Um, so what is our motivation as artists? You know, you might not know, well, I'm on this earth to make sure that all hungry people eat. Right? It doesn't have to be, oh God, that's a lot of pressure. It doesn't have to be that lofty. I'd like to know what motivates Keith because I would love that motivation in my own work ethic. And I, I'm busy, I work hard, but I cannot produce the amount of work that guy does. And all of it's good. It's not like he's making crap like Picasso did. Whoops, sorry. Sorry for anyone who likes Picasso. Womanizers, huh? <laughs> so, okay. So you get your calling or you get your vision. And, and in the book, he talks about how some people... They get it. There was this evidence of people who were going to commit suicide off the Golden Gate Bridge. And I guess out of hundreds and hundreds of people, only like 10 have survived. They hit the uh, water at 75 miles an hour. And then all of a sudden, they're having a calling from God. Or people who have like near-death experiences and see the light. I'm not saying you have to find God even in this. But spirituality is, you know, kind of like your modus operandi. Like why... Are you alive and doing what you're doing? We're not just automatons here. Humans have self-awareness. Consciousness, uh, I think, <laughs> makes sure that we, we are doing something with our life. Most of us. Some people are just lazy. So, okay. That's getting a little abstract. Let's, let's get over. Um, I'm going to need a crutch here. I have a, an old shitty drawing. And I'm just going to float my hand on it uh, because my oils and stuff will start to blob this out and make it too smooth in places that I might not want it. And by blobbing it out, I mean smudge. These are technical terms. So uh, he does talk about how, in his case, he had entheogens. He took LSD or something with his wife. You know, you could, you could help your visions. You could just have them. I had Jennifer working in here, and she said, you know, the funniest thing happened to me, something I've never done before in my life. Do you know what it is? Now, of course, I don't because I'm not her. And she had never opened a bottle of wine. Maybe there's some other people who haven't, but it was really shocking to me. Now, her dad was a pastor, I believe, but still the physical act of opening wine, it's surprising and what a cool revelation that is to be like, wow, I've never done this. And then to be able to learn that skill. Because in adulthood, we tend to not have that childlike uh, wonder anymore. But that gave it to her, you know. I've drawn so many things before. This isn't giving me that childlike wonder right now. But uh, maybe that's something that I'm striving for or, or going after. Uh, 
I love, like in my paintings right now, new things are happening that I didn't expect before. I was really having painter's block and fortunately one of my uh, fellow tenants in C space came up to see me and said uh, that I have permission to fuck it up. So <laughs> that helped. I was able to paint after that, you know? That's the part of the Virgo perfectionism that's very dangerous in that uh, not being able to move forward. And I'm sure lots of you guys out there have experienced that a lot. It's, it's not exactly writer's block because you're already going. It's like a fear of failure or, or, or worse, a fear of succeeding maybe. Anywho, uh, the mystical experience or some sort of insight or some sort of reason. Like, why do you want to be a hairdresser, right? It's the same thing. So us artists have them too. I mean, it's maybe a lot less practical why an artist wants to be an artist. Um, because there is no answer and there's no like, well, I'm just going to do it for money, you know? It's not that straightforward. And so we must have some sort of consciousness within us or, or state or intention to, to move us forward in doing this because it's expensive, you spend your whole life focusing on it. You know, you could be a lawyer. But there was one line that was awesome, and that was, a picture might be worth a thousand words, but sacred art is beyond them. So I love that because it's like beauty, uh, you know, a thousand words is factual, like a photograph, this is here, this is here, that was there, it was this time of day, there was this light. But even this has more information uh, that it becomes more than a thousand words, you know? So in a way it's saying that if there's a good intention and, and meaning behind the art, it has more powerful than just being a picture. I mean, that's a simplification for sure. So in Buddhism uh, or other traditions, Christianity has it, different traditions have ways of taking these steps into insightful knowing of spirit. Uh, so the first one is that in Buddhism is material objects or uh, the outer world. Like we can pray on this paint, this drawing, or we can pray to a sculpture of a Buddha, it's outside of ourselves and it helps us realize um, kind of inner visions, I suppose. Okay, and then uh, I meditate every day and in the Tibetan tradition, uh, you meditate on, uh, so they have Thanka painting. So Thanka painting would be the material object and there's these visions of these gods or uh, mandalas and those uh, when you see them inside yourself or in your head or you're doing visualization so visualization or meditation is the next step up which is the imagined realm so it's a non-existent realm but it carries the power uh, of the spirit within it okay now i'm leaving a little crack here as the reflected light. You see, I'm not going right to the edge. That helps turn the form. So sometimes it's about drawings. Okay, and then, oh, right. So you meditate. And in Tibetan uh, mysticism, you're, you're given some sort of deity um, that you meditate on and you train your whole life so that when you die and you enter the Bartle Total, this is from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, by the way, the Bartle Total, uh, is the after realm uh, where you're kind of in between and you you have choices based off your drives to um, reincarnate as uh, this or that based off what you select. So if you're driven towards, I don't know, some weird vagin vaginal god, then you're going to come back because of your sex drive and or, you know, maybe you'll be come back as a dog because you've been greedy. Kind of idea. I'm not saying that that's what I believe or is true, but the idea behind it um, is 
the you can visualize on these uh, deities and they're moving and you focused all your uh, mind energy and stuff so that when you die you are prepared to see them and move on to the next realm that next realm is the next stage of uh, mysticism of seeing of going forward in your journey and that's the primordial realm and in Buddhism it's a lot called um, spirit voidness it's infinite you're becoming one right these kind of ideas so mentioning those things we have the outer object inner mind object and then nothingness object even in Japanimation, like Neon Evangelion is about that, and the character is just in this white void. So, and that's art, you know? That's animated art. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so we know what uh, the states of vision are. Christianity has the same sort of things. Um, you know, we're, let's just think threes, right? I put a little note on my notes, three. So, you know, the father's... Wait, the Holy Spirit, the ghost, whatever, whatever. I don't know, Christianity is so good. And, um, because I'm having fun right now doing this cross hatching, starting to look good here. I could be totally off. I need to back off of it. Um, 10 minutes. Maybe I'm not going to do the other one. This is uh, turning out to be a lot of fun, um, which was part of the point, right? So now uh, on the second layer, I'm kind of going the direction of, of Michelangelo's crosshatch to give it that little bit of line look. I'm going to have to sharpen this at the break too. It's starting to get really dull. I usually have to sharpen about halfway. Uh, my pencil can get me through the full three hours, but it, I do need to sharpen it. So um, what uh, seven types of art are there in terms of the sacred art realm? Okay. Number one, when art uh, has no... No symbols in it, no crosses, no yin-yangs, um, uh, no spirit, no intention. It can be said to be uh, soulless, commercial, you know? It's not, it's not uh, bringing the viewer or the creator to a higher realm, okay? The next would be one that does use religious symbols, but is anti-spirituality, blasphemous, you know, Pros uh, porno stars and prostitutes dressed as nuns, so, right? That's a low form of art. Uh, piss Christ uh, would be that, you know, it gets its value from the shock of going against spiritual symbolism. Okay, all right. We could talk about that for hours. The next is art that uses symbols, but maybe empty, you know? You use symbols and logic, like it's trying, maybe it's trying, it's more like a, it's trying to explain something, but it's more like a chart, <laughs> you know? Those symbols don't convey or carry along that meaning as it's intended. But it does have some sort of connotation to it. I wouldn't say it's failed art, I just, it's almost, you know, it's like all the bad crucifixes and all the, you know, the Mother Mary lights and the, you know, the little things people put in their wallets to pray to and stuff. Like, it's pretty weak, but it falls fat. And then there's um, your traditions in spiritual art, great works, uh, icons, cave paintings, I would say, um, Islamic calligraphy. Right? So it doesn't have to be the picture of something. Uh, the big one for me in that is like pre, like medieval and pre-Renaissance art. So icon painting where, you know, they're beautiful and they have the gold leaf behind them and they're, they don't look realistic enough for you to say, well, that's, that's this person, but it's symbolically telling you the information that that's a person without being blasphemous and without being falling flat, you know, like those icon paintings are just absolutely stunning and beautiful. And if you don't know what that is from the medieval times, you need to check them out. It's not what we do here. It's not about realism, but they're moving and they're beautiful and they're spiritual. 
the secret art. Okay, that's what we're talking about right now. Can't lose track. I do that too easy, especially because I'm really focused on not making a bad drawing for you guys. You know what's really funny about all these drawings too is they, they either stay in a book forever or they end up in the waste bin. <laughs> so talking all this sacred stuff and it's just bye bye practice for me. Let's step it up one more. So art that uh, I'm going to do this arm uh, and then we'll go back to the chest because this is a lot more subtle area. And then down here uh, I need the sharpened pencil after the break because it is uh, very cross-hatched. So I can't get away with sneaking in my technique here. I have to make it look like Michelangelo's technique, which is closer to doing this. Okay. So art that, you know, the past postmodern stuff, it's, or expressionism, it, it transmutes, uh, it having to be a thing. It's got no symbols in it, but it's abstract, like Kandinsky and all those guys. Oh my God, studio lights just run off. I gotta stand up for a second and reactivate them. Oh, there we go. I haven't been moving for 20 minutes. Oh yeah. Different times of day, the, the digital lights here function totally different. Okay, so we got the abstract art. Rothko would be an artist that is doing spiritual work um, that doesn't have any known symbols, that isn't blasphemous, uh, and it doesn't have icons in it, you know? So the next step up, step six, is visionary symbols are used uh, in unconventional ways. Michelangelo is a good example in the Sistine Chapel. William Blake, he had all those like beautiful watercolors and stuff. And that work was hated at the time. Um, oh, of course, one of my favorites, Euronymous Bosch, right? That's spiritual art for sure. Uh, in very unconventional ways. Um, you know, alchemy was being used symbolically in a lot of uh, Bosch's work. So I'm going the direction of the uh, cylindrical form here. That's the cross contour. But I'm still looking for my darkest darks. Finally, we have the high level of sacred or spiritual art. And that is a, synthesis, a universal synthesizing of it. We have global information. I can learn and take from all religions. Although it's a little bit touchy right now with the stealing from cultures and whatnot, but um, in terms of its meaning, it should be open, uh, open to all. I'm not talking cultural appropriation, you know? So we can learn about esoteric things. I can learn from other uh, sacred places, you know? Look, how many, how many of us know what chakras are and, and even know that they're rainbow and in a certain order? So that's what I'm talking about, about synthesizing them. And so this sacred art is me going internally and synthesizing it, but with uh, personal expression. I mean, that's what my art is all the time. I do a lot of reading and research in order to have a logical meaning. Maybe that's just my demeanor and in case I have to stick up for it. Um, mostly it comes from wanting to convey beauty, but there's a deep beauty in the meaning of it. The work that I'm trying to do now is tarot cards. Tarot cards are very esoteric and I wanted to learn all the symbols. And I also, I love doing figures in spaces that mean something, that have lots of colors. So I am doing it in part to educate myself, but also to make beautiful visions, right? So that's, that's the higher, higher form. Let's look at my notes here. So it's not the object that's made that one loves or prays to, or has that, oh man, what was that called? When you have, there's actually a scientific term when you see so much beauty and it kind of freezes you in the brain. It's not on these notes, it's on some other notes. 
Well, maybe we'll come across it. Anyways, that, that experience has happened to me. That's, I mean, I'm not after that. I'm not like this art was successful or not successful because that did or did not happen for someone. Um, but it's like that your brain gets kind of like confused by it. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so the, there's a Buddha and Dalai Lama, the most powerful guy in all of Buddhism, he, he prays down to it, but he's not praying down to it because, um, wow, that artist made a really cool thing, right? Like the artist is the maker of it and therefore is, is making power or making some sort of effigy that, right? That, you know, that's a no-no, especially in Christianity and Islam. You can't even, in Islam, you can't even uh, depict uh, real things or Muhammad for that matter. But it's what it represents that is the resonating spirituality of that work, right? Holy crap. Time is going fast. So, man, now I, I do need a sharpened pencil. This is not doing what I need it to do. We're going to get a lot more subtle in here. I'm sorry that I, th I really thought because of last week we'd be able to do two, but the I don't want to give up on the quality here of this piece. So, we're at eight. That means two more sessions and a critique at the end. So rather than switch it out, which was my original intention, I'm going to keep working this and we'll keep talking about... Uh, this kind of stuff. So, but let's take five because it's getting heavy. And I really need to see a man about a horse, but it's not going to take five minutes. So I won't take the timer. I'll uh, see you guys in a minute. Oh, delicious. Sharpen. Bunny, you can't get distracted by what you're talking about. It's more important that you sharpen your pencil. Oh my god, there it is. For the sake of uh, showing the pencil sharpening. Especially because you hear me getting mad at it because I broke it, but probably it won't break this one. 
The ones that I kept breaking last week were quite old, like older than me old, like from the 60s. So the wood was really brittle and they had traveled a lot. There were just tons of fissures and cracks throughout. This one is pretty tough too, but I don't think it's going to break. But I do want it sharp. And you see when I sharpen it, I actually don't even touch the material. Wait, I'm There's white there. That's the glue. And so I haven't actually touched the material. I've only cut off the wood on top between. So you got to get a feel for that. It's not. Uh, oof, it's getting a little tough there. It's like how hard you press it, what angle, I don't know, it's like 15 degrees. And you're not trying to cut as much as possible. Um, that'll get you breaking lead for sure. And you'll be miserable because when you pay $4 for a pencil, and I mean, we don't even use it all the way to the bottom. It's your holder. The cheaper way is to get woodless pencils and get a holder but they break too like they're broken and shipping so the nature of the beast so I'm just like quickly rubbing it back and forth not to to sharpen it but to just get the glue off so that's the only time I flick this hand otherwise it's pushing with this thumb then now normally I would take a little time and I would sharpen it with the blade but I've got 13 or 14 seconds. I'm just going to pause time. I'm going to pull out the, my favorite way of doing it. You can see I sharpened earlier with this. Wait, where are we? I'm not even on camera here. I'm turning while I do this too. So we'll have a nice point again. So because it'll be the most pointy at the beginning, I will do the lower leg, which is uh, more cross hatched. So I'm freezing time. Because it's we're not we don't have a model and it's just me in here ranting and raving for almost three hours straight. I'm allowed to pause time. It's a great power in being the artist, isn't it? I wish I had more time. I, the older I get, the more I realize the more work I should have been doing a long time ago. So if you're just starting out, go hard. Don't sleep. Don't party and just get to a place where then you can sit back and be like, man, I attain this. I don't have to work as hard anymore. Because I know most of you guys who are on there and I can see your names, and I know because I work with you, we're already going hard. This is hard stuff, believe it or not. It's not physically that demanding, although after these drawing sessions, I'm, my back is always sore. Um, I love sitting on the donkeys, but I don't have good posture when I'm sitting on there because there's a camera right over my head. Normally I'm fine, but the way to shoot, because I don't want you guys to see my greasy hair. I stayed here last night because my battery was dead and I had no way, uh, I actually didn't even want to go home. Too much craziness there. Um, because I knew if I saved the time of driving home, which is 15 to 20 minutes and driving back, I could make up the work I had missed yesterday because I had a little visitor in here and we hung out and uh, I had to make up time anyway so I got to sleep in a little bit and then I was already at work. I honestly wish I could live down the street. Today when I was charging up the car battery, like driving around trying to get the charge back on it, um, we'll do the 10 seconds here. I was looking in the neighborhood for places to buy. I'm like, well, if I have to drive anyways, maybe there's somewhere in this neighborhood. But I looked on um, buying houses in Altador and stuff and uh, someone's gonna have to win a lottery to afford the houses around here. It's like they start at a million. Even the condos were too much. Like the price of the condos was okay, but the condo fees was crazy. 25. So the other one's gonna be like 15 minutes, the last half. We'll see where this brings us. Okay, and I said I'm gonna do uh, the leg. 
uh, because it is all cross-hatched. So now that I have this nice point, I can actually uh, draw with it. So have good tools, guys. <laughs> this point will have to be sharpened in the next session because I've changed how I'm using. And also be aware of the direction you're going so that you get control uh, of the feather. Dave, if you're watching, sorry we couldn't meet up today so I could critique your work. That car battery thing was a problem. But we'll, we'll uh, look at your work. We'll make a private appointment. And uh, I hope you're drawing with me because you're usually on these. Following along, making beautiful drawings. No rest for the wicked. Okay, so underneath this calf, I might have made this part a little long. There's a dark area on the side of the patella. Now there are seven landmarks on the knee. And those are the condyles, those bony protrusion. You know, when people draw bones like, ah, I don't want to ruin this drawing. Anyways, when people draw like dog bones or whatever, it's the side parts. Um, epicondyles and condyles and so lateral inside or outside this is the inside um, anterior superior right these are just the medical words but um, those condyle protrusions are where these uh, shadow forms are falling onto I like getting nerdy. What can I say? Love my job. Right now it's a very strange job. <laughs> Talking into the air. It's not a skill set I was born with, I tell ya. So I'm not drawing these straight. I am giving them a little bit of curve. Michelangelo's fairly straight, but we want to accentuate um, the calf shape a little bit more if we can. You know, I'm not saying I'm improving on his work. I'm just going with what I know. It's so slight as well. So let's not split hairs, right? Okay. Uh, uh, I'm pushing that way in case you're trying to do the same part. He does do a little, there's some little crosshatch here. Interesting, interesting. And only, like you look at art, but only by like really studying it, do you, you, you know, and doing copies, you're like, oh, that's how they solve that. Looking is not enough. You know, if you wanna really learn, you gotta do it. It's not like it's digging ditches. It's not like it's hard, hard work. I mean, maybe mentally it's a little bit hard. And this lower leg, same thing that was done on the calf. Whoa. This has more to do with the fall of light too. Uh, because it's so far from the light source, it needs some value on it. The ankle does not. It's kind of picking up the light. All right. 
going to have to speed up what I'm doing a little bit. Otherwise, we're not going to make it to the finish line. Just soften those edges a little bit. Okay. Maybe we'll make it to the finish line. How are we visual? Visual. Okay, I'm tilting up. That's, that's a little tough for me. Uh, maybe if I just zoom in, I don't know. Uh, okay. So back to this, uh, there's this thing called this morphic um, resonance theory. So the idea is that species have a collective memory. And I think everyone's heard that the hundredth monkey thing, right? Uh, you know, there are these monkeys, I think it was in Japan, and they taught one how to use a stick a certain way, and then on the other side of the island, even though they didn't have contact with each other, that that information was passed along. Okay, so in a way, being art creators, we are taking from that morphic energy, but we're also giving back to it. Um, so there's rituals from the Dogon or something that, you know, I can become aware of without actually having to read a book on it. And the idea is that that morphic field, that, that energy that's coming off, uh, affects my work. You know, we have the internet, we have education, we have globalism, we're exposed to all sorts of things, uh, new inventions, uh, just diversity all the way around in this whole world. And so that, we're affecting it and we're also affected by it. So there's a paradox here with this, you know, mystical sacred art life. And that is that we're making <laughs> these illusions, but the whole thing about what, you know, the, the void, this, this higher primordial realm of nothingness and oneness all at once is completely elusive. So the thing we're going after is impossible to get in a way is what um, I think the author's trying to get at. There, and there's a beauty to that for sure. Okay. Let's look at someone else here. Uh, in, the word, in the book Mysticism by Evelyn Underhill. Sorry. Um, she says there's five stages. And it's interesting because I'm learning this Jungian stuff right now and there's there's stages of anime, animus, um, ego, going through your psyche, meeting your shadow. It's a very similar uh, trend. And in alchemy, the transmutation and stuff. So her stages are as follows. Awakening, you have the vision. Now I wanna be this artist. Or, you know, you're, you have a near-death experience. You have some sort of uh, encounter of divine or spirit. Um, can't, I need to see this closer. I'm actually, might have to cheat here. We'll just put it like that. Um, okay. So I can't really see. It's hard to see what that, what's going on there. In this drawing, it's a little murky some places. I don't know if it's just the image I have or if he's just being ambiguous here. Her, so that first stage, like I have this vision, and the same is for you know creating art. Like oh my god, I had a dream or something, and um, you're awakened to it. You know, you become aware of something more than yourself or something that you want to do. The next stage is purgation, purgatory. So self-eradication, shedding of falsehoods and delusions. It's like you've become aware in the awakening, so now you have to uh, become a newer you or the work itself has to uh, be somewhere else. So you need to like get rid of disbelief maybe. Maybe you're like, you know what, I can do this. You know, there's lots of, lots of things that that can mean, I think. So this is just a little bit of clavicle here.
Okay, and um, you know, getting rid of your delusions because you become awakened, right? You're now aware of so much more. So I'm kind of bridging whether this is mystical or whether you're making art. Like I'm, I think it it can be uh, superimposed onto all these things. The third one is illumination, and that is. Uh, through diligence, through practice, like we do by coming and drawing all the time, you have the lights go on, you have these revelatory experiences, you have, which is like a glimpse of the absolute, you know, Awa awakening lets you know it's there, but then you got to like meditate for 500 years, or, you know, like you, um, you need to practice the drawing to get to the next level. Maybe um, in terms of making your art, you, it's a breakthrough, you know? You first know what you want to make. Oh my God, I want to be an artist. And then you make, you start making it. And you're like, I guess some of the stuff you could drop and, and the purgation is like, I don't know how to paint, you know? Uh, and then you start to get skill in some sort of way. It doesn't have to be a physically tangible skill per se. Okay, so there are two shadow shapes. Uh, crossing the the ribs where they meet up at the sternum between the chest here so just talking out loud to clarify in case you're wondering since the buddha did that under the bodhi tree i mean in a way the these are like the hero's journey a little bit as well i mean all this stuff seems to permeate our culture so deeply because maybe in the universal unconscious is actually there. Just food for thought, right? Um, okay. So in the dark night of the soul, or, you know, feeling sorrow, feeling sadness, there's no divine presence anymore. You've become aware of it. Maybe you've studied, you've studied, and now you're plateauing. Same in our art. And it's like, oh my God or no God, right? It's not working for me. So you have to surrender yourself. You have to become passive. You have to actually become, in a way, your, and your work might have to become a conduit for the divine. You, you know, give up the ego control over it, right? So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing in a little of the Jungian stuff. Sue me. You know, I think I made this too short. He's too compressed in mine. Like this space is too long and this space is too short. The belly button could have been a little lower. It's too late to fix that now, but I would have put it here. Just so you guys are aware. I'm aware. Very aware of my mistakes. Okay, so you go through that difficult time, the dark night. You know? It, and it's almost like you had that awakening and it was so blissful or you have made that piece of art and you want to rest on your laurels, but you can't. It's not enough. You need to continue to go forward. And I guess that's part of what that is. Like, oh, I, I have to still do the work. <laughs> it doesn't just end here. It only ends when you die. And even then, the argument is, is that it doesn't end. <laughs> okay. So... Scratch this out a little bit more. We got 10 minutes here. Oh yeah, we've got one mini little session. Okay, I was just worried that I was losing time and focus, which uh, can happen. But we're good. We're, we're actually kind of laughing now here because uh, it's all the little like touch up bits. What, what can I do to make it a little bit better? Because I can't change bad anatomy now, right? It's too late for that. It, this is what it is now. But we can get the serratus going in here. I actually, this is quite loose what I'm doing. It's too bad about that belly button. But I can't erase this material very well. 
So, there, I'm going through my Dark Knight of the Soul right now. Oh. But, as I go through it, uh, and I get through it, then there's union. Absorption into the divine. Becoming one, right? Like yogic practice, you have to do it for a long time. First, the awakening. I want to do yoga. I want to be more flexible. Ain't that the truth? Purgation. I need to clear out some room in the, the, the front of my space and put a mat down and also uh, eat healthier. You know, if I'm going to do this. Kind of. Like, that's not in terms of uh, internal beliefs, but... Okay, so this is going to get complicated, so I don't know if I'll be able to talk at the same time. Illumination, the diligent practice, you keep going, you're like, oh my god, okay, now I can put my legs behind my back. You're starting to feel really good, and then you plateau, and you're not having that spiritualness of it. That's the dark night of the soul, and you're like, i got to become a yoga teacher. And then you have your union when you reach those higher levels. Your union with the divine, which is the supposedly the point of why you're doing it in the first place. Okay. So I'm going to have to cheat here and compress things a little bit. But this is the interweaving of the serratus in here. Luckily, all this is dark. And you don't need to put a lot of details in dark in the darks. They can look flat. The, the non-flatness of them comes from the way uh, you did your bed bug line, your shape between the core shadows. Core shadow, gas shadow. So that should be way further back. Luckily it needs to be darker anyhow. It's too dull. It's too dull to do this now. Ay ay ay. I worn this stuff wars out a little bit faster than I was anticipating. I'm trying to use the edge, but bring this forward. Now I'm using it more like a brush too, you'll see. Calligraphic. So, I mean, if you've gotten this far through and you actually listen to what I'm talking about, please let me know in the comments uh, if you like my crazy rants and if I should keep doing this sort of thing, talking philosophy, talking not just technique. And I don't mean you guys who are here with me live right now, because I also know that other people watch these at different times. You can watch these at different speeds after it's archived. So you can watch it much, much spe uh, faster, speed it up. And uh, you can also watch it without listening to sound, right? But maybe you just want to see how it's done. Here it's just like, it starts to just be the nitpicky, finicky stuff. So uh, I have some areas that are a little too dark that I'm just going to lift out. I'll have to reestablish some of the shapes here. Um, oh, because they're getting lost. Oh, there goes the studio lights again. Right up. Okay, it's good to know. So, I did get these lights to be programmed beyond 20 minutes, but I have a, a a light and a bunch of stuff over me, so it can't see my small little moves. But it used to, in the beginning, at the studio, it used to turn off while the model was standing on the stand. This could be a little lighter. I'm squinting my eyes here. Um, taking out some things that are a little too dark. Just squint. And I can also probably finish this foot down here a little bit more.
This might be embarrassing when I pull it back up. Oh, the other uh, drawing came on top. Well, it's surprising to me that we only got this one done. But I think it's looking quite nice. There was a little bit of a ha movement for me in a few places here as well, which is always nice. It's not just like I'm a crummy human photocopier, you know? This could come down. I really would like to, uh, I just haven't had the time, but I really want to bring back my other YouTube channel, the one where I talk about my personal art. But it's like edited and it takes a whole day to do one of those episodes, at least. I have been time lapsing my new paintings and the sculpture I'm doing that I can't show anyone because I don't own the copyright on it um, until uh, it's opened. Waterton and if the school was open everyone would see each week what it was what was happening but I think we're still closed for sure till the 21st who knows what the government's gonna say so I haven't listed any new classes yet because I don't know what to do and I'm already having people just today complain about refunds and whatnot so it's a lot to deal with and it costs me a lot to take the money and then give it back because there's a transaction fee on everything, 3% of the total. And then when you give it back, it's 3% and a fee. And then I pay the monthly fee. So it's like I lose $17 per student. I got 60 students here. You can see that adds up pretty quick. Luckily, most of the students are being patient and waiting till we reopen. It is out of my hands currently. Poor models. Oh my gosh. No work for them right now. But I feel very fortunate that we can do this together. I had the equipment, got the know-how. Yeah, not my favorite foot. Kind of wish I just uh, left it, to be honest. Okay. Squinting my eyes and looking. Because... Losing my focus again. Must mean there's only a minute left. So this is reflected light, so it's quite bright. And here's a little bit lighter. Here's light, but here's slightly darker. So I'm just but moving my eye around actually quick so that I can see uh, some of the relationships. This could be a little longer. One, two, three, there we go, four. Whoa, it's so, that's gotta be so loud by there, right? Put it right by the microphone like a fool. Okay. Gonna take five. I'm gonna step back and stare at this and judge. Um, because it's gonna have some bearing here on uh, what's gonna happen next. All right. What 
can we do to make this better? Oh, wow, my foot's too big. That's the problem. Backing up helps a lot. I'm actually pretty happy with this so far. too far. This lat is like ridiculous. No one has muscles that big. No sir, I don't like it. Oh yeah, I should sharpen this again. It's so dull. I should maybe just sand it. Really, if you're following or drawing along, don't forget to back up. Um, I can't really back up because right behind me is the camera stand. So I don't, I can't get a clear view standing back. I got a big easel and clamps. It's actually quite an impressive setup. that's lost. Normally I um, sand into the baggie and this sits in the baggie, but I'll show an example like this. That's my 220. Bunny's 220. And then I keep all the dust inside. Um, but I don't have a separate bag just for this one. So this is the mixed purple uh, graphite. This is the mixed sandpaper. And so I'm not collecting the dust for later use. The dust is great because you can actually like brush it on the surface and get some really subtle tones. I don't know if we dare use white. That might be pushing it. Uh, also, afterward, um, you have to wipe off the pencil. Yeah, let me go because look how much material there is. That's just dust that could get on your piece in an, uh, oh, you know what, from sanding I got some on here. Funny, I blurted it all over there. <clears throat> minute and a half, minute and a half. I'm gonna take down this foot too right now. I don't like it. Oh, there. Yeah, some areas are, are too thick. The way I've drawn them. Because I've been using a dull tool. But I'm not trying to get an exact copy, right? Just get the practice in. So we're at 841. 35 seconds. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go put the garbage back while I have 14 seconds, and uh, what the hell is that? Oh. Okay. Uh, we'll go for 15 minutes, just doing cleanup, and Whatever else comes up, I'll start with cleanup.
Probably should clean my. Actually, I'm pretty good. Boy, oh boy, did we ever talk about a lot of things today. Let's put a ground in. I might just enhance my outline. I like how that looks. I know it's not what's here, but since the only place this is gonna live is on this video and social media, I wasn't gonna go on social media at all, but I gotta advertise that this is happening or no one will join us. So I went on today, which was kind of a mistake. Cause I had so many messages and I was just like, oh, do I have to deal with this? So a couple people I just said, I'm not on here anymore. <laughs> you know my email, email me direct. People use it like, uh, you know, everyone it speaks a different language. So it's like, oh, I only go on Twitter and I only go on Facebook. And so it's getting hard to know how to get a hold of people and where you send stuff. Okay, on Michelangelo's, this all appears light. So I'm just gonna give it an erase, um, just to make it less strong, less apparent. Use my floater. They call this a bridge. Floater sounds like spit in something, so I corrected myself. Hope you appreciate that. <laughs> we lost that awesome mouth that I had. Let's put that dark in dark, the fold. This back of the triceps is usually very straight. It's a tendon, kind of a diamond or a house shaped tendon at the back. So it goes flat and then you have the weight, the hanging. He's captured that nicely here. So this part I made too, it's too angled and too wide. Should go more like this, but it's nothing we can, uh, can't alter it now. I bet you, one, two, three, five. yeah. I bet you if I drew this again, the next time it would be much better too. You know, you get the lesson the first time. So I say even with painting and stuff that you should draw a thumbnail first. I always do uh, when I'm doing like my work work, not when I'm painting from life or whatever. Then I'll uh, you can just draw and paint, but um, need to have a an outline or a plan, I think, like we did in the first steps. At least know where what direction you're going, so you can't like I have the mistakes and you can't go back and be like, "Oops," because that's a got to start over scenario, right? Which is fine too. Do our study first. If it's good enough for the French academics, it's good enough for me. I'm squinting to see that this is not as bulbous as I made it. But this should be lighter. More angled. Sometimes to make something lighter, you just put darker beside it instead. I mean, no, that is actually lighter. So we might 
huh just a little bit of turning the edge oh and I lost my little bulbous point which he has on there <sighs> what else is happening up here this is kind of coming across lightly so I can do like a little bit lighter things now if I Man, I didn't do a lot up here either. I guess I could develop this further. Such a big separation between the two and I want to kind of bring that together. hear the birds outside my bedroom every morning not last night though no birds outside sea space chirping it was so windy too and and I, so I was listening to like a recording of rain and then it stopped, but I still heard rain that was coming out the... It was actually pattering on the window. Oh, it's my favorite sound. I grew up in Vancouver Island, and when it rained, I would go sit in my parents' Honda Civic and just listen to it hit the roof. I also go for a lot of walks in the rain. I call it liquid sunshine. Its sound is so calming. We don't get a lot of it here in Calgary, so I miss it a lot. <sighs> Sorry, I have to lean in so you're going to see my greasy head. I will be having a shower as soon as I get home tonight. One day, and these Portuguese guys, quite the sight. Hondals over here. Elbows got them too. Not as many as the knee though. I made that a little bit darker than uh, Michelangelo's. Six minutes left. I, I think, I mean, I'm actually, we got 10 minutes left total. Um, it's 8.50, we only go to nine. Don't want to take up all of your time. I appreciate you being with me at all. I'm going to, I am going to put some white in. I'm going to spiff this sucker up. Just because I'm on this tone paper. And the, he's on parchment. It's yellowed over time. We'll compare here shortly. But I want to just give a little, just a little, it's a little special, you know? Something about it. Only on places where there is uh, no material, if possible. Okay, maybe even some on the ankle. This is a little special. going with the form. This is general, it's not actually sticking that well right now. Maybe at the 
clavicle. Maybe a little bit on the clavicle. A little bit on the deltoid. It's a nice effect. Giving it a little more roundness. I don't know. Okay, so I wish I could sign these, but they're not my drawing, so be like, oh yeah, Michelangelo, God, I got this. I'm going to have to call this here before I go too crazy and ruin it. I'm gonna call that done. Um, we got seven minutes left. And I'd like to put it up beside uh, the screen, beside the source material that I'm looking at right now. You guys will see your comments maybe on the screen here. Just give me a minute. Michelangelo, more than meets the eye. I'm just adjusting the contrast a little bit. I don't know why I didn't do this on my screen before. All right, so materials out of the way, please. Ah! And that's how you break the pencil. It just fell. Oh, that's sad. All right, brush it. Brush, brush. And I need a clip. Stop that, I don't need that anymore. I'll move this up and then we'll um, adjust this camera. I'm putting my back hat back on now. Okay. And up we go, up we go, up. Not so bad. Not so bad, right? It's almost like we've done this a few times before. Hey, I'd like to see myself this time. And I just want to check to make sure it's not doing that weird focus thing it did last week. So there's the delay. And your comments, your, the YouTube is behind them, the guy. There's the YouTube being run. All your thumbs up and stuff right there. Pretty sweet. So I'm looking up at the screen like this and drawing. Um, this is the camera feed. This is the OBS feeding it in. There's like a 10 second difference. You see, I mean, you're not seeing it at the same time as I'm saying it, but then, uh, it feeds out, uh, to the YouTube, which is really cool. Hey, Dustin Port. Thanks for your comment. Awesome. Well, it's nice to know you guys are out there watching this stuff. I can't wait till we can come back in here and do it together. Okay, let's, uh, I'm not trying to improve on it. I'm actually trying to like fit, uh, you know, be tricky and fix what I didn't do well. <laughs> so, uh, we'll try to get the size fairly close and then let's do like a little, see how close Bunny got measure shift on here. I have to back up to look at it. I'm like crammed full. This is, even though the studio's big, there's not a lot of room in here. Yeah, I'm not obviously much bigger. So I'm gonna try to blow this up a little bit. Um, wait, is that too? Oh man, this uh, preview doesn't let me do a lot of things. And I can't shrink mine now. Let's see. Hey, come on. What is going on? There. No, it's not gonna go quite as big. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stand back. I'm gonna rip it a new hole. Do you guys see that square? Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Maybe I should get my laser pointer out on this thing here. 
All right. Yeah, the white. I mean, the white does look good. It does flatten it out a little bit. As uh, I was rough with my crosshatch, that material has quite a bit of wax in it. Uh, the foot was too high. I trimmed it back a little bit. This is too far over and too angled. See if I bring that over. See that? It should be more more tilted, more tilted up. So that allowed things to drift. Because you saw when I constructed this mess. I base things off of other things, and that's why I have the box forms in the beginning. Um, those tend to not be off, but as you're adding the masses, like this looks quite a bit bigger. This whole this whole width to height ratio uh, looks different. Yeah, mine's not not quite there. Maybe we'll say it's stylized. So, anyways, that was fun. Uh, I hope you guys get a lot out of this. I'm trying to uh, give value, you know? I'm gonna still do master copies. The one that I wanted to do with the Michelangelo that we had on earlier, maybe, and I'll find another one that's a little bit less sitting and rendering because that's not as interesting uh, for you guys to watch, I figure. Um, I do wish it was redder though. I, I love that color of the red chalk, but this sepia on this brown isn't so bad. If you are drawing or want me to look at your work, you can make a private appointment at the studio or take a picture of it, uh, put it in your email. Um, it's also cool if you have the technology to actually take a photo and lay it over top and really be critical of yourself. I know where my problems are. I talk about them in here, making the legs too thick or like making the whole thing too slender. It's kind of like, it's not just habit. It's kind of like, um, we draw what we know more than what we see. And so in a way you're always drawing yourself. You know, you, I'm obviously not that muscular, but um, the way that I know my body and my muscles because I see it every day and the way I see it is like looking down. And so my feet seem smaller. And so people tend to draw the, the tapering narrows and maybe the legs aren't long enough. And I think it has a lot to do with what our brain has built in what that means to us. And it just takes a lot of study and a lot of you seeing where your mistakes are. I have a lot of problems with lower legs. Um, they're lower on the paper, but also I haven't spent a lot of time studying them. Um, I have spent a lot of time on the back and I love the torso a lot. It's what fascinates me at this time. You know, this is where contemporaries, we could just pick one part. But if you do the overlay, you'll really let yourself see where things are. And it's like, okay, so you're off a centimeter here or there. But if you're consistently off, especially in a seated position, if you don't make the lower leg long enough again and again and again, what you're doing is you're just breeding really bad habits for yourself. And I call it like a groove or a ditch. Like you just keep digging it and you can't get out of it. And in fact, when you draw on paper and create a ditch, you're actually creating a groove in the paper and you're just like, oh, oh, I know my hand can move another way. One of the ways around that is looking in the mirror or drawing with your opposite hand. Um, but you need to find your own solutions and be a little bit harsh to yourself. I kept saying like, this is good enough. This is good enough for me where I'm at and what I'm after and what the purpose of this amount of time is. But uh, uh, it's, I'll put it on Instagram. I love the old paper, like maybe do an effect on this or something. But uh, man, he draws heads weird. They look like little baby faces at first. Um, Okay, enough tangents, enough crazy talk. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you come back again. Share this with your friends. I'm trying to spread value to the world, but I know it's like three hours. You can skip through it faster. It's archived, you can go back to it. It would be amazing if you followed along um, because maybe you would draw the same areas and you know, the voice in the ear. It's good to have something occupy your mind so that you do it more freely. Um, the other thing is, is you don't want to overthink it and get yourself trapped in like um, freaking out and spending five hours on the leg. That's why we have this time limit and we have a, a, a certain way of working. We could do this for 20 hours too, but I don't think you would learn as much or get the same result. And you would be uh, 17 hours more wasted of your life. So I just want to say, uh, please share, like, Comment, subscribe. I'm starting to get this YouTube thing down. Um, yeah, I think that's all that there is. Anyways, guys, I appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your week. 
please come back next week and join me again because who knows what the heck is going to happen and what I'm going to talk about. Other than that, ciao for now. Time for my fade. Thank <laughs> you.